This audio production was made in collaboration with Audible Anarchist. Part 6. Radical Subjectivity. 74. What is this radical subjectivity? From now on, the revolutionary subject is the conscious and positively self-conscious egoist, as opposed to the unconscious or negatively self-conscious guilty egoist, among whom the revolutionary walks unrecognized but recognizing them. He can sustain this positive attitude toward his expanded egoism and its first sign in others, by virtue of his comprehension of its positive social outcome in a society, separated from this one by the social psychotherapeutic process of revolution, in which the egoism of each is the first condition for the fulfillment of the egoism of all. 75. Contrary to the ideological banality, it is only the most greedy people who can never be bought off. That is to say, they cannot be bought off within the narrow realm of corruptions normally offered. We are the last to deny that every man has his price. But just as Hegel demonstrated that mere quantitative differences can, past a certain point, actually become qualitative changes, so the radical subject escalates his price so high that it finally transcends altogether the realm of exchange value, and for that matter, of all partial appropriations. 76. What we have called communist egoism is essentially the same as what Vanagam and his situationists have named radical subjectivity. In all their writings, it is there in spirit, if not ever fully in letter. In their failure to develop this concept in all its ramifications, and coherize their whole practice with it, and in the remnants of moralism and secular Christianism, which therein still remained, we locate the very root of their failure. 77. Radical subjectivity, that is, communist egoism, or the realized social individual, Marx, is the concrete universal which is emergent in our time. It is the particular which is, potentially, everywhere. Radical subjectivity is our very root, the root of what we all have in common, the real basis of community. Root subjectivity, the primitive human root, could only be divulged as such at the far end of prehistory as the outcome of the process of that prehistory itself, and as the secret basis of its supersession. 78. I am nothing, but I must be everything. Within the monstrous decrepitude of contemporary society, the nihilist, its commonplace product, knows only the first half of this statement, I am nothing. Therefore, anything else can only be less than nothing to me. In the upside-down world of alienation, it is the totality of things, of commodities, of money, of capital, that is everything, and we, the workers who make it, are shit. The nihilist is like a syllogism suspended at the minor premise, an acrobat whose somersault is broken in mid-flight. For him, the logic of this empirical truth, the truth of experience, of daily life, does not immediately tumble over into its opposite, its necessary conclusion, I am nothing, but I must be everything, the conclusion that would make a revolutionary of him. We produce commodities, money, capital. We produce everything that makes up social wealth. We must become, explicitly, what we already are implicitly, everything. This becoming visible, this becoming true of the social truth, expresses the total process of the communist revolution. This has been a production of Audible Anarchist. You can find more Audible Anarchist on YouTube.